This is a role play developed as part of the course curriculum for Manage TB, an online course for doctors. The participant have enacted the roles given to them. The case discussed does not refer to any existing patient but has been developed as part of the course curriculum. The investigations such as x-rays and lab reports used in this case scenario belongs to patients treated at National Institute for Research in Tuberculosis, Chennai. Their identity have been anonymized. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Dr. Vignesh. Ma'am, uh, uh, I have a patient to discuss with you. Yeah, uh, is this ahead. an appropriate time, ma'am? Yes, yes. Go ahead. We can discuss. Ma'am, uh, we have a 35-year-old male, an IT professional, who has presented with complaints of loss of appetite and weight for the past two months and persistent coughing for the past 20 days and fever for the past one week, ma'am. Uh, he is also a known smoker for the past 10 years and has no other comorbid illnesses. His lab investigations have turned up and his sputum is positive for acid fast bacilli and gene expert has detected mycobacterium tuberculosis which is rifampicin sensitive and his x-rays shows bilateral lung parenchymal involvement. Have you collected any other additional information to help us to manage this patient? Uh, yes ma'am, uh, I enquired regarding his previous any anti-TB treatment which is negative and his uh, HIV status is also non-reactive. Since he is a non-smoker, he has been uh, smoking for the past 10 years, about a pack of cigarettes per day. He also consumes alcohol occasionally on company parties. There are no other concomitant illnesses like diabetes or hypertension. And his clinical examination reveals that he is febrile, not anemic, no clinical evidence of jaundice or cyanosis and clubbing. And his vitals are stable and his weight is 57.6 kilograms. Okay. So now it appears that this patient is having drug sensitive pulmonary tuberculosis. So uh, what will be your line of management for this patient? Ma'am, uh, since the gene expert turned out to be rifampicin sensitive and there is no previous history of anti-TB treatment, I would like to start him on a 6 month daily regimen which consists of 2 months of intensive phase of drugs, isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol followed by a 4 month course of continuation phase with drugs isoniazid, rifampicin and ethambutol. Okay, so what if this patient had received previous anti-TB treatment, what regimen would you prescribe for him in that case? Um, in this case, the duration is little longer and a few additional drugs have been added. Uh, I will start him on an 8 month daily regimen with an intensive phase of 2 months consisting of isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol with injection streptomycin followed by 1 month of isoniazid, rifampicin, ethambutol and pyrazinamide. The continuation phase consists of 5 months duration with isoniazid, rifampicin and ethambutol. Okay. Why do you think it is important to give a longer duration of treatment for patients who had received previous anti-TB treatment? Ma'am, it is known that patients who had received anti-TB treatment previously may harbor drugs resistant bacilli in their lung. So, hence the need for uh, additional duration and the additional drugs now. Okay. So, what dosage of drugs will you prescribe for this patient? Um, all these drugs prescribed above are as per the body weight of the patient by the weight scale now given in the course. Okay, fine. So, now we are going to start this patient on TB treatment. What do you think you need to do prior to start of treatment for this patient? Um, I will uh, advise him regarding the continuity of treatment without skipping any medicines and uh, continue till the duration of the treatment is over. Okay. It's very important uh, point that you have told uh, told uh, now. Uh, the pre-treatment counseling is very important in the management of uh, TB patients. You will have to explain to the patient about the nature of his disease, the causative organisms and its mode of spread. Not only that, you will have to uh, mention him about the total duration of treatment, the need for him to take drugs regularly the consequences of irregular treatment and uh, inform us of any um, issues that can happen with the uh, interruption of treatment. 
you have to educate the patient about the side effects to the drugs and ask him to report immediately if he develops any one of them. You will ha also have to mention about the reddish discoloration of urine with rifampicin which a patient has to consume as part of anti-TB treatment. And uh, you will have to advise him about cough hygiene and avoiding spitting in public places because this will help to reduce the transmission of disease. And you must be knowing that his household contacts are at a higher risk for developing TB. So, advise the patient to screen all his household contacts and children less than 6 years of age in his house after ruling out active TB should receive isoniacid preventive therapy. So, all these points are important to be covered in the pre-treatment counselling of patients. So, now that you have counselled the patient, uh, how will you monitor the progress to treatment in this patient? Mama, I will advise him to get enrolled and get treatment from the RNTCB, that is, the Revised National Tuberculosis Control Program, where they offer patient-centered treatment. The drug adherence is monitored by a trained treatment supporter who is a healthcare worker or a community volunteer. I also heard that they are using SMS reminders and phone calls to make the patients uh, uh, remember to take the tablets on a daily basis. Ma'am, uh, what if the patient wants to take it, uh, take the treatment in a private setup? Yeah, uh, we have to respect the patient's choices. Be it any provider, either public or private, their responsibility is to ensure that the patient completes the entire duration of treatment. Not only that, the patient have to be monitored during the treatment for their progress. So, it is important to counsel them about the, uh, about the consequences of irregular treatment. And it is, you have to also have in mind that you have to notify this patient. So, you please make arrangements to notify this patient as part of the mandatory TB notification initiative. Uh, so, uh, how do you, you plan to monitor the progress of this patient? Ma'am, uh, he should be reviewed every month uh, regarding the clinical improvement and his sputum conversion and his weight gain and other symptoms ma'am. I will also ensure that uh, a test for sputum is done at the end of the intensive phase and the continuation phase. In addition to that, at the end of the treatment, a chest x-ray can be taken and a sputum culture can also be taken ma'am. So, when do you think you can stop treatment for this patient? Ma'am, if, if his sputum examination turns out to be negative at the end of the treatment, then I will stop the treatment ma'am. Ma'am, but one doubt. Yes. If the x-ray still uh, shows uh, lung lesions, should the treatment be extended for some more time? If the patient is having clinical improvement and it is and his sputum smears are negative at the end of treatment, you can stop treatment for this patient. And uh, you you must note that the radiological lesions have a long uh, take a long time to clear. So if there is radiological improvement and there is no worsening of disease. A persistent lesion in the chest x-ray does not warrant extension of treatment duration. So, are you clear about that? Yes, ma'am. I will go and start the treatment right away. Okay. So, now can you uh, summarize the important points of our discussion? Yes, ma'am. Details of previous anti-tuberculosis treatment is essential to decide on the regimen and its duration. Dosage of drugs appropriate to body weight has to be prescribed. Counseling of patient is important prior to anti-tuberculosis treatment initiation. Adherence to treatment has to be ensured. Clinical, laboratory and radiological monitoring has to be done during treatment. Persistent X-ray lesions do not warrant extension of treatment in case of negative sputum smear and clinical improvement. 